Hey everybody, just have another video here from Pierre Polyev yeah, that I wanted to uh, have a look at and react to. Uh, so let's have a listen and then we'll talk about it after like usual. Um, the cost of living is extremely high. I think everybody behind you can probably attest to that. What is the plan, I guess, when it comes to the grocery store, when it comes to the cost of rent, that sort of thing? Is, is there something you have in mind? Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Terrific question. Uh, you're, you're right. Uh, after nine years of Trudeau, everything costs more. Work doesn't pay. Housing costs have literally doubled. Here in Hamilton, they have tripled. Um, my common sense plan is to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. We will axe the carbon tax to lower the cost of gas, heat, and grocery bills, and to make Stelco competitive so that it doesn't have to lay off these workers. Trudeau's carbon tax will probably shut down this steel plant if he goes ahead with the increases that he's promised, while continuing to bring in cheap subsidized steel from China. Second, we need to fix the budget. By capping government spending and cutting government waste, we can bring down debt, inflation, and interest rates. And finally, we need to build the homes. I will require municipalities free up land, speed up permits, and cut building taxes as a condition of getting their federal funding with the goal of building 15% more homes per year. The reason housing is unaffordable, we don't have enough homes. We have the fewest homes per capita in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. That's because of our horrendous bureaucracy. I will require local governments to clear the bureaucracy to build 15% more per year. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings, thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build and we'll back the trades because we need boots not suits to build the homes of the future get our kids in the trades right out of high school and make sure that trading money goes to them give tax fairness for traveling trades workers who are building those affordable homes that is how we will make it possible for people to earn a powerful paycheck that buys affordable food gas and homes in safe neighborhoods thank you well i mean great point right boots not suits that's how you get things built in this country right people in suits aren't going to do it we all know that so i mean that's a another great slow i know he does have a lot of slogans i don't really like the non-stop slogan but they are catchy and people do remember them when something's catchy it's stuck in your head and that's kind of the point of uh, pierre Pauli of doing that so you know it, it's there's truth to it Right. We all know that we need hardworking people and they need to be paid fairly as well. You can't just say, hey, work really hard for no amount of money and rent a crappy apartment in Hamilton for twelve hundred bucks. It's a bachelor. Shouldn't be anywhere close to twelve hundred bucks. Make twenty four hundred a month. So you're going half 50 percent of your earning is going into your rent. And then you got to go. You got to work that hard just to get that little. It doesn't make any sense, right? So, I mean, again, Pierre's absolutely right about that. Um, but some other points he made in this video, which I thought were right on point, and he's absolutely right about the Hamilton housing market. It has absolutely tripled. There are houses right now being sold in you know the north end of Hamilton. They're small, old bungalows. They're not bad little houses, don't get me wrong, but they're selling for like $600,000, some of them. It... it or I've also seen a lot sold for like five hundred thousand. These should be worth around one seventy five to two hundred thousand dollars. Maybe, maybe two fifty if it's really nice inside, or they you know they fix up the backyard and like did some really cool landscaping or something like that. But that much for that kind of a house in that neighborhood, it's not as bad as it used to be with crime, but it's still not great. That being said, crime is back up on the rise, and that's going to be, you know, one of the low-income areas where houses is, where where crime is going to be on the rise. So again, like it, it's like back when I was in high school, it was really bad. It was a really bad area, and then it started to get a little bit better. And go figure. Ever since we have NDP mayors and federal liberal governments, everything's gotten worse. Go figure, right?
but that it's just ridiculous how much the housing has increased as, as especially when crimes increase so much like you're paying a way over price uh, a way over inflated price to buy a house that doesn't get you a whole lot in a neighborhood that's rough like that's where you want to raise your kids and you got to pay 600 grand to do it I mean, I don't really get it. I don't really understand the people buying those houses either. Like, just stay renting for a couple of years until this this bubble bursts, because the bubble is going to burst. Um, now, he also mentioned that if the carbon tax goes up, and I don't know if this is true or not. However, if you are a factory worker that produces a lot of coal, you are going to get hit extra by these carbon taxes. And if they keep getting hit, the company will shut down because they won't be profitable. If companies aren't profitable, obviously they're going to just shut down because they're not making any money. They can't pay their workers. They certainly won't be able to give their workers wage uh, wage increases. So again, just you know, more tax is just killing industries. It's killing people's bank accounts, and it's not doing anything. It's it, where's it going? Overseas, multiple other countries for what? I mean, it's just it's complete nonsense. And then the last thing I wanted to go over here is. You know, we have the fewest homes in the G- in all of the G7 countries. Now, to be fair, Pierre Polyev did say that we do have a lot of, like, we do have the most land available. However, a lot of that land, like some of that land, rather, is pretty uninhabitable. People don't want to live in you know, far north Ontario or far north in any province, really, like, for that matter. Why? It's extremely cold. Like to the point where like, you know, it's it's freezing cold for seven to eight months out of the year, especially if you go further up into the territories. It's like there's some times where in uh, like the Northwest Territories where you get like 10 minutes of sunlight per day in some seasons. Right. Like it's, it's no one wants to live up there. Right. You got to get everything trucked up there. It costs so much to live there. It's however, we do have a lot of land like in central Ontario, southern Ontario, and we're just not building any houses. There's lots of land in Hamilton to build affordable housing, cheap little condos or, you know, cheap little bungalow houses that people can get their foot in the equity door and start building their wealth. That's what we need. And there's tons of room to do it. Tons of room. But like Pierre Paul, you have said, you have to go through all these permits and each time you, you start a new process, it just takes forever. And then by, by the time you have the first stake in the ground, it's like it's months, if not a year after you've already tried to start you want to build a house in you know summer of 2024 we well, got to wait till like the summer of 2025 or maybe just before to get started and then you got to build like it's like a year and it's over a year just to get the houses built where Pierre Polyev wants this to get going really quickly and like he said he's going to take away federal funding unless you allocate um, uh, dedicate rather 15 per, to a 15 percent uh, home increase 15% home increase every year would help, especially if we manage the immigration. If we manage our border better, that would help even more. People who come here who commit federal crimes, you know, they, they hurt someone, send them back home. Don't put them in jail here. Send them home. We don't need our tax mo- money going to someone coming here, hurting someone. Now they're in jail and we have to pay for it. That doesn't make any sense. And no, that's not racist to say that. I'm a fan of immigration. I'm also a fan of math. Okay. And this math isn't working out and keeping people here who are criminals, not that all immigrants are criminals, but the ones who are get them out of here. Look at the numbers. Look at what, look at what's happening with crime. This is why we can't afford houses. There's not enough of them. We don't build enough of them, but we let in a lot of people, a million people this year, guys. It's crazy. So, you know, a lot of things, that Trudeau's done needs to be undone and it's going to take a while to do it. But if Pierre Polyev get, can get things sped up, if he can get provinces to commit to this, we could start to improve pretty, pretty quickly under a Pierre Polyev government. That's assuming he's telling the truth and not pandering. That's a whole nother conversation. But, um, you know, for this video, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. What do you think about what Pierre Polyev had to say? I always enjoy uh, reading and engaging with your comments. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps grow this video. And uh, thank you so much again for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I'll be back shortly with a new video.